Hey everybody, and welcome to Falcon Place Neo Scavenger. Now, uh, Neo Scavenger is basically a um, really text-based uh, post-apocalyptic survival game, you could call it that. Uh, no zombies, though, at least not to my knowledge yet, and hopefully, knock on wood, no zombies. I mean, I love zombies, but goddammit, let's just be real here. It's been kind of overdone to quite the fucking degree, to be honest with you. I was gonna say to a slightly degree, but no, no, it's, it's been done completely overboard now at this point, and, you know, which pains me as much as much of a zombie lover as I am to, uh, actually say that myself. Now, Neil Scavenger, though, is kind of really post-apocalyptic, text-heavy, uh, type of game. It's, uh, made by Blue Bottle Games, which is a one-man party, essentially, and by one-man party, I don't necessarily mean, like, you know, it's a party of five with, uh, you know, Nev Campbell, was that her name? Was it F. Campbell? I'm not entirely sure. I kind of forgot my uh, 90s pop culture here. But, you know, it's not like, you know, one-man party where the other four people left and just left, left Nave alone. Or Nev? Neve? Neve Campbell? Nev Campbell? I can never get that one correct. Is it even Nev Campbell? I don't think it is. I'm probably thinking of, uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt? It's probably Jennifer Love Hewitt, is it? It's not even Nev Campbell. Well, regardless, uh, <laughs> my poor pop culture aside. Uh, Neil Scammer, let's get into the game really quickly. But I mean, what I meant by it is only a one-person, uh, project, which is really, really good so far, and uh, I really dig it a lot, so hopefully I could uh, turn a few heads over to this game if you guys want to check it out and see more of it. All that is said, though, let's go ahead and jump into a new game here. Now, really quickly, as I said, this game is really turn, uh, really text-based. Um, it kind of, like, it starts off with kind of like a uh, deuce, uh, deus ex type of feel to it to me, like, you know, you have to pick your uh, skills and abilities here, depending on what you, uh, you choose to uh, excel at you basically um, falter in other degrees, right? So, for instance, over here, I'm looking at, uh, you, you gotta choose four skills and or, or abilities uh, as a basic human, right? Uh, that's what we are to a degree, I believe. Uh, hasn't been really been, uh, I guess, uh, officialized to me, but I, I believe I'm basic human. So let's go ahead here, and uh, I'm really, in terms of a survival type of game, I really wanna say that I wanna be heavy and melee, just because, uh, you know, guns can be kind of a little bit, uh, you know, hard to come by, I'd imagine. So, uh, let's let's go uh, melee for sure. Uh, let's see, better chance to hit in melee combat, higher wound severity, and better defense in combat can leg trip in combat. Whoa, that's good. I mean, it sounds like I'm going to be a scumbag leg tripping people. That's perfectly fine, though. You know, it's a post apocalyptic world. You do what you can to survive. Let's see, other than that, metabolism, food and water intake re uh, rates reduced, healing rates slightly reduced. Well, I guess, I mean... Food and water intake re rates reduce, so basically I would, uh, I guess not eat as much, such you're telling me? Uh, botany, knowledge of herbs, fungi, and other useful plants, yeah, well, you know, that's, uh, probably not the best, uh, skill for me to have at the moment. Next thing I'll know is be like, running around, like, the post of the world, like, you know, screaming, like, 420, bitch, and whatnot. A ranged higher chance of hitting with a ranged weapon. That could be useful, but it kind of, uh, seems counterintuitive to melee. Hiding? Let's go ahead and use hiding, just because I... I'm a coward at heart and reality athletic. Less fatigue per move, can run away faster in battle, can run further on the map before run moves deplete. Trapping, ability to trap and prepare animals. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. Mechanic, knowledge of mechanical systems and components. Electrician, knowledge of electronic systems and components. Tough. Higher pain threshold, immune uh, system effectiveness, and resistance to wound, ability to headbutt in combat. Well, this kind of goes hand in hand with the melee thing we were doing, right? So let's go ahead and continue going that way. Hopefully it works out for us. The tracking can spot all older tracks than normal and high tracks more effective. Tra uh, hiding your tracks is going to be really important when you're trying to run away as well. Kind of really want to go for this, but uh, I'm going to leave it in the back burner for now. Improved healing rate via procedure training and sterilization techniques. More detailed stat bars on condition screen. Haha, uh -huh, interesting. An eagle eye can hacking skill and manip manipulating computers. Sorry about that. How about you manipulate my tongue there for a second there? That's not a sexual innuendo, believe me. Uh, can see one hex further than normal, light and line of sight permitting, and can detect hidden things easier. Can carry more without being encumbered, melee attacks are more damaging, and create obstacles in combat, huh? And lock picking is always good in the wastelands, you know, if Fallout has taught me anything. Uh, let's go with um, Eagle Eye, though, just because he could detect things easier. I'm gonna basically be like a scavenger class is what I'm kind of um, suiting myself up to be here, it seems. Uh, traits you can choose from. Now, these are basically gonna give you an extra space for a skill, but at the same time, it's gonna take toll on your, uh, abilities. So, um, as you can see, my, uh, myopia and fragile are basically, uh, unchoosable for us anymore because, uh, some of the skills that I choose kind of uh, conflict with those, right? So, 
What we do still have is metabolisms. Food and water intake rates increased, healing rates slightly increased. So uh, I would need more water and food if I get this. Not the greatest. Uh, feeble, melee attacks effectiveness is lessened, can carry less. I uh, don't want to do that. Insomniac, difficulty staying asleep and sleep is less beneficial. Let's go with Insomniac just because it kind of uh, suits me pretty well. So I'm going to be a scavenger, uh, paranoid, uh, schizophrenic in the wasteland is what it seems like. So now that we have Insomniac, it gives me one more ability here. So how about we go with, um, hmm. wanted to do strong in tracking, honestly. Uh, can create obstacles in combat. You know, I'm doing melee, right? So I might as well be as strong, schizophrenic. Maybe I'm on PCP for all you know, and that's why I'm really strong and like crazy. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to make this a PCP scavenger post apocalyptic world guy. Let's confirm here. So after you get all that done with, which is really, I really like that whole uh, building process. Like again, it's really reminiscent of Deus Ex to me. Or Deus Ex, I should say. All right, you wake up disoriented, slumped over the base of an empty cryo sleep pod. Still damp from cryofluid. The thick dust from the floor uh, clings to your skin, leaving a clean spot in the ground where a large O5 is painted. Across the room, there is an open door to the hallway and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, an unearthly scream erupts from down the hall beyond the doorway. Something is coming fast. Alright, so what the fuck do we do? So basically, depending on what skills you have. Over on this side, you will basically have options to, uh deal with the situation at hand. So right now we could hide, which is something I'm really great at. A strong, prepare to fight it. Melee, prepare to fight it. It's kind of a same thing right there. Or you could just jump out the window. So let's go ahead and hide because it seems like I'm using one of my skills properly. Kind to give you guys an idea of what you do here. So with that, we've chosen that. Currently selected response, find some place to hide. I'm going to confirm that. That's a fucking terrifying beast. Uh, you quickly scan the room for a hiding place and duck behind the cryo tank nearest the window. Hopefully, the light from outdoors will make it harder to see you in the nearby shadow. And with most of the room smelling of cryo... cryo protectants, you stand a pretty good chance of having your scent mask. You hold your breath as something enters the room. Its heavy breathing becomes more nasal as it begins sniffing as it begins sniffing the air. The sniffing grows closer but continues further into the room. It lets out an annoyed bark. Huffs and starts sniffing back into the hall. A few minutes later, you're pretty sure it's out of your shot again. So this guy kind of gave up on us. All right, so uh, we were able to uh, basically deal with that situation. Uh, I'm pretty sure just about any skill could have dealt with that one. So uh, let's start off here by um, obviously we could jump out the window now. We could search the console for records, but let's go ahead and use Eagle Eye to see if we uh, notice any details. All right. Something catches your eye as you scan the room. Obscured in the shadows behind tank number two, it looks like something small and metallic is lying on the floor. Upon closer inspection, it appears to be a multi-tool pocket knife, probably left behind by maintenance personnel ages ago, and nobody saw it since. Whoever left it here, you're pretty sure they don't need it as much as you, so you decide to take it. Alright, so I uh, good thing for that, I got myself a... Uh, basically a pocket knife. Back from my days in the Eagle Scouts, or the Falcon Scouts in reality. Alright, so let's um let's search the console for records though before we get the hell out of here. You check the console for any patient info and come across three records. Tank number one, Anton Bubbler. Committed 12 tw uh, 2012 11 11. Uh, emergency contact, Angela Blubber, yada yada yada. I don't really care. Billing information, Angela Blubber, yeah. Tank number five, that's us, right? We came out of number five. So we're Philip Kindred. There's no data on us, and our billing information uh, is Detroit Savings Bank, so we are from uh Detroit, Michigan. Uh, more than likely, uh, for all we know, we might be, uh, Alex Murphy here, and we're, like, you know, the future Robocop. You don't know. Alrighty, so tag number six, Lloyd Banklup, uh, committed 28, 10, 18. Or for all you know, this is Demolition Man, and we're just, like, either Wesley Snipes or Sylvester Stallone, depending on the to uh, color of our skin, I suppose, we could say that. Alright, so let's go ahead and confirm this, um, really, um, uh, it didn't tell us much other than we might be Philip Kindred or not. So now that's done with, let's go ahead and climb out the window and get going here. So you decide to go outside, and you see if you, uh, if you decide to. Well, all right, let me get a second there. You decide to go outside and see if you can figure out where you are. Avoiding the broken glass, you step onto the sill and outside, rustling some plants that have grown wild in the area. It's cool outside and damp, probably morning. You're in the parking lot of a cryo facility, but everything looks disused and in despair. Plants have pushed their way through the pavement and over the facility. Worst of all, nothing looks familiar. You don't remember this place or even who you are. Your frustration mounts, but you can catch it if you put it in check. Might as well take a look around. So let's go ahead and take a look around indeed. Confirm. So everybody's going to tell you a little bit of uh, how the game works and whatnot. Um, how it's going to work, you're going to have like a hex-based system. That's going to be your world map. And from there, you kind of uh, either investigate areas, run away, yada, yada, yada. 
A uh, hex can be scavenged. While standing in such a hex, click scavenge to start scavenging it. Pretty self-explanatory. And a hex has uh, items in it. Um, while standing in such a hex, click to see items in it. So basically, uh, the chest... Well, I'll go over it more in depth when we get to the map, which should be the next screen, as a matter of fact. When traveling in the world of Neil Scavenger, you will notice some hexes with boxes or magnifying glasses on them. I guess I won't have to explain it after all. <laughs> boxes mean that the hex has items to pick up. A gold outline means that there are new items since you've last been here. Magnifying glass means that the hacks can be scavenged for items. Most of the really useful stuff must be found by scavenging. However, scavenging takes time and energy, and you risk danger every time you do. Let's go ahead and confirm this. So as you approach the town, there is no sign of activity. Buildings stand in ruins, vehicles are overturned and blackened with fire. Explosions mark radiate outworld from the walls and pavement. In the distance, strange-looking creatures circle in the sky like monstrous leathery voles. Oh, vultures, I should say, not wolves. That'd be pretty amazing if there was wolves flying in the air, though, or not really amazing, but quite fucking terrifying. The world has drastically changed from what you knew. You're telling me, I was, uh, in Cajun there in 2012, wasn't I? Some sort of cataclysm has befallen Earth, returning mankind to the Dark Ages, and along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers, you decide to look around and scavenge what you can find from the ruins. I guess I can go to Denny's and get myself a Grand Slam breakfast. Alright, so basically here we are in the uh, world map that I alluded to earlier. So as a matter of fact, um, you can see right there, we do have a gold outline over our um, magnifying glass, meaning we could investigate this area. So, um, let's see here, I went into the menu by uh, accident here. Uh, let's uh, get out of the menu here. Don't, don't do that. Alright, again. Let's uh, back to the menu, show main map. Alright, there you go. So let's uh, quickly go on over to, uh, we don't want to go back to the cryo facility, right? So let's, as a matter of fact, just uh, head on over this side. So let me jump here. A player, current status is barefoot, tough, strong, current weapon, punch, and hiding false. Believe me, all I need is my fucking fist. I'm like Chuck Norris of the Wasteland here. All right, so now we could essentially, where is my, um, this is really interesting. Where did my, um, oh, here we go, scavenge. There we go, all right. Scavenger. Right. Oh, what the hell is this? You go away. All right, once you begin scavenging, you must first choose a location to search. Some hexes have only one, others will have more. Then you will be shown the relative success chance and safety levels of the scavenging process. You are also shown tools and skills you can use to adjust the results. Green full bars are good, red empty bars are bad. Makes pretty much sense, you know, you cross the light when it's green, you don't cross it when it's red unless you're intoxicated and then you get hit by a car and, um, yeah, I have a lot of Medical bills to pay because of that. Uh, loot. Chance of finding loot or a campsite. Safety. Chance of avoiding an accident. And sneak. Chance of scavenging without attracting attention. Choose your options carefully. Alright. So once you have started scavenging, you are shown some areas available to scavenge. Choose one and press confirm. Alright. So thank you, sir. Alright. So you decide not to try to scavenge for now. I didn't choose that. You go back in there and scavenge. Alrighty. So looking around you, there, uh, there appears to be a few areas worth checking out. So over here, where you basically pick your skills, you also choose what you want to, you know, scavenge and look into. Right now, we're looking at a destroyed office building, so for sure, let's go ahead and throw that in there. And scavenge this destroyed uh, building. So right now, the loot is red, meaning we won't find much of use in here. Safety is high and sneak is high, though. So um, it doesn't really hurt us to check it out. I mean, we're going to lose a turn and whatnot, but that's still fine. Maybe we could find, you know, I don't know, somebody left uh, a goddamn Pop-Tart or something. Who knows? Those things probably you know, last forever, to my knowledge. They're kind of like uh, chicks. Or is it peeps? No, it's not chicks, it's peeps. Chicks is like the cheap knockoff of peeps. The uh, marshmallow chick, uh, little chick and whatnot. You know what I'm talking about, right? Either way. The office building is in ruins and is unlikely matched. Uh, much survival has collapsed. The creaking walls and ceiling are no boost to your confidence either. Still, that may mean no one has brave enough or perhaps is desperate enough to go in there. Scrabs me pretty well. So we could sca uh, scavenging a hex is what we're doing now. So uh, we could scavenge discreetly or we could scavenge brutishly. Well, safety and sneak seems pretty high. So fuck it. Let's just be a brute about this. And can I use two at once? I've never done that before. Yeah, let's see what happens when you use two at once. You found something. Go to the item screen to see what it is. Alrighty. So we did find some shit. Oh, okay, we got found like a lot, it seems. All right. Well. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not too familiar with the game just yet, so this is going to be a learning process for uh, you, the viewer, and me as well as the player. But I kind of like it this way because it's, it's a survival game, you know? It's kind of like if you go in there blind, it's, it's a bit more survival-ish. It's kind of like playing Dark Souls for the first time ever. You want to play it, like, you know, completely blind because, like, you know, that's what makes it fun. 
Either way, though, um, hospital gown, value 5, condition 100%. Let's see if we could remove that for now. We don't need that. We did find some blue jeans, and that's always good. Hopefully, um, not skinny jeans, though. I don't want to be looking like a fucking hipster in the uh, post-apocalyptic world. Um, why he's not putting those on, though, is really beyond... Oh, there we go. All right, so... Put that on, and we got a Pearson Wakefield pack boot for our right foot. Alrighty, so make sure we put that in the correct foot, and we got uh, one for the left foot. Good, we're not gonna walk around with only one shoe, that'd be crazy. There's two blue jeans, as a matter of fact. This one's 90%, and this one is 91.6, so we got the good one here. Brown t-shirt is 85.6, 93.7. feel like I'm over here, uh, basically promoting uh, radio stations. Yo, 93.6, brown t-shirt FM. Alrighty, so shopping cart frame as well, huh? This isn't this isn't gonna do shit for us though, is it? I mean, maybe I could use it to beat somebody over the head with. Who knows? Uh, dirty rags. That's also not gonna do anything. So basically, on this window here that I'm picking stuff, by the way, this is what you found in that area. You can't take everything with you. You have to basically put, choose what you want to take and put them in your pack or in your hand and whatnot. So. This side over here is basically what you found in the area, but what you can take with you is limited. So you can't just walk around here with like, you know, 70 rifles and be like, Oh, I'm perfectly fine in a wasteland with, you know, carrying 70 rifles. So it kind of has that realism involved in it. So uh, obviously we don't need the brown shirt. Oh, the brown shirt just went into my uh, penis for some reason. And that one did as well. Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure what the fuck has happened here. Well, what just happened? Where did I... Where did, <laughs> put your pants back on. Crazy man. Uh, where did those shirts go? Okay, I'm not entirely sure where those shirts went. Uh, where is my weight system again? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I can't really... Current cursor mode, open cursor, open items window. Camp screen, alrighty. Well, they, let's just assume that they're in a better place now. So, uh, let's see, scraps of paper. It reads, uh, sterilize water. Waterproof. This is like a list of some kind. Sterilized water. Large fireproof, waterproof container, heat source, and three waters. Is this kind of telling me how to have, uh... Okay, well, apparently... I don't want to take the jeans in my hand. There's really no point in doing that. But however, I, I am going to take this uh, scrap of paper. Basically, this little pocket down here, where the scrap of paper is, it, uh, it signifies that it's going to be in your jeans pocket. So also your clothes have pockets that you could actually put extra stuff in, so that's actually pretty cool. Now, I gotta wonder if, yeah, that's what happened. If, apparently, I uh, have three layers of shirts on, but it's fine. I mean, you're in a wasteland. You don't want to uh, freeze, so the more shirts, the better. So now that the scrap of paper's in her pocket, let's keep that for sure. Uh, disposable plastic shopping bag. This is actually really good because it gives us uh, an extra thing to put items in. As you can see now that we put that in there in our backpack, uh, it has opened up our backpack to more items, so... Let me see if you can just equip, equip it. No, you can't. But you can put it in your pocket in case, but that's not going to be useful. Let's put it in my uh, backpack for now. Uh, dirty rags. I don't see that being useful at the moment. Water would be great. However, we have no, bot no bottles to actually hide the water in, so at the moment it's not going to work out. Pebbles, we don't need pebbles. Uh, Medium-sized branch for a tree, from a tree. Uh, you know what? See if you could... Uh, maybe you could beat somebody off with a stick. Who knows? We'll see. Handful of small twigs and bark. Shards and pebbles and stones and yada yada yada. Another shit that we actually do need, I don't imagine. So let's take the hospital gown just in case. Or actually, I think you could put that on top, right? No, you can't. For some reason, I thought you could put your gown on top of your, uh. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. But let's take the gown for now and let's go ahead and call it quits. So that was a relatively, uh, successful scavenge for sure. So let's go ahead and, um, open and close the encounter screen. Alright, and I'm confirmed. Alright, good. So that was pretty, that went pretty well for us. Now let's continue going onwards here. Um, from this point on, let's go down over here. Uh, these little red marks next to your character is going to tell you the uh, tracks you're leaving behind. So if you have the tracking skill, you have a better chance of hiding these tra um, tracks and whatnot. Let's uh, show zoomed out minimap. Okay, that doesn't look too good. So open, close skills and abilities. Again, these are our skills and our abilities over here. Uh, the crafting screen is going to basically be, um, you know, that scrap of paper we found? Well, if we find known recipes... Here we go. So basically, the known recipes has now been entered because we saved that scrap of paper. So if we, found, if we find a large fireproof, waterproof container, a heat source and water, put that over here, and we basically make sterilized water, 
We could also try to make a 3.308 uh, rifle with scope, but we need a Phillips head screwdriver, smaller medium monocular, optical zoom. Okay, we're gonna need quite a bit of items for that. So for now, let's uh, avoid that. Overall though, um, this will tell you how to craft and whatnot. Open the items uh, screen, self-explanatory. Your condition screen, this will tell you if you have gashes and you know, really fucked up injuries and whatnot. And open and close the camp screen. And this will tell you where you're currently uh, camped at and whatnot. We're not camping anywhere at the moment though, so... Obviously our shelter and our, con our concealment are zero. We could sleep there, but you know, it doesn't really offer too much, uh, protection. Alright, so now that we've kind of covered the basics, let's continue onwards here. Uh, not enough moves left for this turn. And that's in indeed true because, uh, we have zero of five turns left, so let's go ahead and end our turn here. And we are going to get into our first combat. So what happened there was a bandit was kind of rolling through and he saw us just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And let's see, he um, is going to be indicated over here by the uh, bandit terminology. Uh, he has a monkey wrench on him. He's uh, tough and he's barefoot. We are tough and strong though, so I could probably stomp his foot because I'm wearing shoes and kind of like, you know, wreck his shit. So right now he's uh, the middle portion right here will tell you how far he is. So right now he's uh, 40 feet or at least hexes away from us to a degree. Uh, our cover is low, the weather is cool and clear, and time of day is dawn, terrain level. Alrighty, so here we have the options of what to do to take uh, care of this encounter. We can run away, but I kind of want to get that monkey wrench off of that man, so we're going to kind of uh, make him rule the day that he ever spotted us and wanted to come at us. So what we're going to do right now is, um, I have no weapon, except my fist, which is probably more than enough, but I could threaten him. I could dodge his attack, but he's not going to be attacking right now. So let's go ahead and charge towards him, because uh, charging... Uh, removes two to three spaces between you and the target. Right now we're 40 spaces away, so we do, as a matter of fact, need to kind of uh, close in. 